He was the most influential Roman politician and military genius who acted on the world stage in antique times. He marked a new chapter in Roman history. Because of him, the Republic was replaced with the Empire and Rome almost conquered the world known at the time. Here are a few facts you didn't know about Gaius Julius Caesar. While it has been disputed, it is estimated that Julius Caesar was born in Rome on July 12th or 13th, 100 BC. His family Julia or Julia in Latin was far from rich, but was a part of the patricians, Roman aristocrats, and claimed to descend from Iulus, the legendary son of the Trojan prince Aeneas, alleged son of the goddess of love, Venus. There are three explanations of the name Caesar. Explanation number one, because of the blue eyes. His eyes were black, but since his rival Cornelius Sulla had blue eyes, this interpretation might have been created as a part of anti caesarian propaganda in order to present Caesar as a tyrant. Explanation number two, because of the hair. Since Caesar was getting bold, this interpretation might have been a part of anti caesarian mockery. Explanation number three, born by caesarian section. This is the most accepted interpretation. In theory, this might go back to an unknown Julian ancestor who was born with a C-section. His family was part of the Popularis, who were leaders in the late Roman Republic and relied on people's assemblies to acquire political power. Their opposition were the Optimates, or the aristocrats, who wished to limit the power of popular assemblies and extend the power of the Senate. In 85 BC, Caesar's father has suddenly died, and Caesar became the head of the family, or pater familias, at the age of only 16. He decided that he belonged to the priesthood and managed to get himself elected the new high priest of Jupiter. As a priest, he had to be married to a noble woman, so he married Cornelia, the daughter of an influential member of the Popularis. Caesar's family was in a civil war with Lucius Cornelius Sulla, who was a dictator at the time of Caesar's ascension and was an optimate. Sulla carried out bloody purges of his political opponents and seized their properties, particularly of those who held to the Populari ideology. Due to Sulla's final victory over Caesar's family, Caesar was stripped of his inheritance and priesthood and was forced to run away and hide. The threat against him was only lifted when his mother's family intervened. Without Sulla revoking his priesthood, we wouldn't even know of Caesar today, and Rome probably wouldn't become an empire, as the high priest was not even permitted to touch a horse or look upon any army. With nothing in his possession, Caesar joined the army and served under Marcus Minicius Thermus in Asia. Caesar proved himself an effective soldier and was awarded the civic crown for saving a life in battle which was regarded as the second highest military decoration. On a mission to the Kingdom of Bithynia, securing the assistance of King Nicomedes IV's fleet to Rome, there arose rumors that he had an affair with the king, which Caesar would deny for the rest of his life. In 75 BC, while sailing on the Aegean Sea, Caesar was kidnapped by pirates and held for ransom. He maintained the attitude of superiority and threatened them with crucifixion, which the pirates of course laughed at, but later, after his ransom was paid, he returned with the fleet and captured the pirates and as promised he crucified them. Caesar went to Iberia, today Spain, to become a governor and while he was there, he encountered a statue of Alexander the Great and he realized with dissatisfaction and tears that when Alexander the Great was his age, he conquered the known world, while Caesar achieved little to none of note. In 59 BC, with the help of his friend Marcus Licinius Crassus, the richest Roman in history, he was elected consul, the highest elected political office of the Roman Republic. He was also aligning himself with Pompey, a Roman general who married Caesar's daughter Julia. This partnership came to be known as the First Triumvirate. Caesar was deeply in debt to Crassus and needed to raise both money and his prestige. Recognizing the wealth to be gained through conquest, Caesar left Rome with his legions and went to Gaul in 58 BC. While militarily just as strong as the Romans, the internal division between Gallic tribes guaranteed an easy victory for Caesar, and Vercingetorix's attempt to unite them came too late, and at the decisive battle of Alesia, Caesar displayed his tactical genius and defeated Vercingetorix. 
Back in Rome, the first triumvirate has disintegrated. His daughter Julia died in childbirth, and Crassus was killed at the Battle of Carrhae in 54 BC. Pompey had aligned himself with the Optimates and was declared the sole consul of the Republic. In 50 BC, the Senate, led by Pompey, ordered Caesar to disband his army and return to Rome, but Caesar crossed the Rubicon River with his army, triggering civil war and said the famous words Alea Iacta Est, or the die is cast. Pompey, rather than meeting Caesar in the open battle, fled to Egypt, where he expected to find friends, but the Egyptians killed him, believing that gods favored Caesar over him. When Caesar arrived in Egypt, he got involved in a civil war between the child pharaoh Ptolemy XIII and his sister Cleopatra. Caesar sided with Cleopatra and put her on the throne. Caesar and Cleopatra also became lovers. He even had a son with her named Ptolemy Caesar. Caesar was declared a dictator in 47 BC and later a dictator for life. His most important reform was his change of the calendar. He set the length of the year to 365 days and added a leap year at the end of February every fourth year. That is the origin of the calendar we know today. The senators feared that Caesar would disband the senate and proclaim himself king, so on March 15, 44 BC, Caesar was assassinated by 60 or more senators that he thought were his friends. He was stabbed 23 times, but only one step was fatal. Caesar's grandnephew Octavian defeated the senators and initiated the end of the Roman Republic and the beginning of the Roman Empire. What do you think about our pick? Did we say something wrong? For more videos like this, subscribe to Photon Feast and leave a comment saying what you would like to see next. Until next time, goodbye.